Okay, we're back live inside the cube here at the uh, IBM Edge 2012. We're live in Orlando. Barry Cohen, the CTO of the Edison Group. Uh, welcome to the cube. Thank you. Uh, you guys are a research firm, do a lot of hands-on testing. Yes, right. You work with IBM, the big guys, HP, EMC, all, mm -hmm. all the above. Uh, so tell us one: what have you been working on with IBM, and share with us uh, some of the recent work you just produced. Well, most recently this year, we've been working with V7000 Group on two aspects of the platform. Most first part of the year we've been looking at manageability of the platform and we produced a white paper comparing the manage ease of management with V7000 with EMC and NetApp storage systems showing the great ease of management, ease of use that the V7000 offers. And uh, I, I know they were talking this morning about it in the presentation and yesterday about the ease of use and the management manageability is significantly superior to most of the storage platforms on the market, especially in this market space. How do you measure manageability, uh, ease of use and manageability? A few years ago we created with one of the other vendors a way of counting and comparing complexity. Okay. And basically when you perform a task on a computer, it's a series of things you do that you generally call steps but the interfaces vary. Some have wizards, some have a tree-shaped view, others have a command line or a menu-based view. But the task itself is do this, do this, do this, do this. So we've came up with a way of counting that with calibrating mouse clicks and things like that that seems to work for almost any context. We know it's that that's the case because we've done the same research for Oracle and IBM and HP showing for each of their products how they are manageable and it's a good tool that gives I like to call it a pseudo metric because it's not it's still subjective but it's it, it does give a way of comparing within its context that works so when you think across um, all technologies and, and and you look at usability at the uh, usability index who's the who's the rock star other than Apple, you mean? Well, I'm, you can throw Apple in. Um, I, I want to know what you think. I mean, in and, and enterprise computing, it depends on what we're talking about. On storage, right now, it's IBM and followed by Sun with the Oracle, the ZFS platform, and um, I'm not familiar enough with uh, a couple of the others that are emerging mm -hmm. to have give a good judgment on them, as far as manageability is concerned. The database market, which is where we started with this, has changed so much that our original star is less of a star now, okay. and everybody is becoming more complicated rather than less, so I don't know where so that's going to go. So you've got technology areas that are going in the wrong direction from a ease of use perspective? Um, yeah, I, I think databases have a problem in that they're being called upon to do so many different things that no matter what they do, they're not going to be easy to manage right now. Uh, the major relational database companies are trying to also be big data, Hadoop database systems and things like that. So they're trying to do too many things at once. So you can't possibly make that easy to do in the short term. Okay. But the, some people are trying to uh, turn um, what were discrete systems into appliances, a, 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 a right. collection of systems into appliances. And certainly that's a big part of IBM's initiative here. Um, what, what's your, uh, and you contrast that against buying best of breed solutions, right? So, Well, let's look at the things here, which is vSouth 7000 in part as its role within the pure systems environment. Okay. Uh, which is, appliance might not quite be the word, because it's awful big appliance, but it is by taking a series of good or even best in class components and abstracting their physicality. You enable rapid deployment, lower cost, and often better management. So, so you lower the cost of the system in general and you simplify you know, IBM's pure flex system, pure envi systems environment integration. Uh, some of the other unified systems, I don't know what, ha what this category of computing should be called, uh, work pretty well within themselves, but they don't play nice with others. 
VBlock, for example, is really, if you don't have VBlock, you can't use it. If uh, FlexPod, you don't. HP is moving toward the pure, the pure systems model, but is n really not there yet. So if you look at an appliance that way, it's a, the right direction because this once everything is working, your main concern is running the workloads that device is supposed to be using. And therefore, an appliance model gets that complexity out of the way. When you look at the, so you, you figured out a metric for measuring ease of use. Have you figured out a metric for measuring the ROI on ease of use? Well, our method, we, call it, we do a cost of ownership. We look at it point of view of management cost. Okay. In other words, if you can save administrative time um, by 10%, 20%, 30% in some of our studies, D7000 is about 30%. 30% savings in terms of management over other time. systems. Over it doesn't. It means your storage administrators have more time to do the more complex, difficult things than they would otherwise. They're more efficient. They can manage more storage devices. Um, one of the things this type of metric requires, to some extent, is a weighting factor. What do they? Do? What do people do? And what, are they, what do they spend their most time on? And what's more important to spend their time on, which may not be the same thing. And so what we focus on is that combination. And if you can save 30% on the day-to-day -day mundane maintenance tasks so that you can deploy more storage for VMware, or you can simplify in the pure systems model the deployment of workloads without even worrying whether it's on VMware or Power VM or stored on this or stored on that, you've tremendously lowered the cost and you can get more efficiency out of your team. The, uh, uh, as you, you mentioned VMware and, and virtualization. We just had John Twigo on uh, uh, recently, just a little bit earlier, and he was he was quite um, um, uh, negative on virtualization in general, unless it's mainframe virtualization, uh, level of virtualization. What do you think is the sort of state of the industry in terms of ease of use, in terms of virtual, you know, VMware? And, well, VMware does a very good job of simplifying the interface to, uh, to the degree that it's influenced what IBM has done with PowerVM. It's influenced what HP is doing with HPUX virtualization. It's influenced Microsoft and oh, it's no, Hyper-V. Hyper yep. And uh, dealing with managing ever more complex environments. When VMware was new some years ago, it was pretty simple. You had a server. You couldn't even cluster before you clustered it. And you could do stuff, but now you have these complex, very large environments with thousands of virtual machines, and it's more of a big deal. And manageability is the big deal in virtualization. You look at it on the storage side. The storage appliances, the mid-range storage market, which is the prime storage environment for VMware and virtualized mm -hmm. environments is, especially with unified storage, where you have block storage and file-based storage, which fits into how VMware works, and even PowerVM and the other types of virtualization. The model of managing the storage through the virtualized environment starts making sense. After all, if everything is virtualized, you don't care about hardware. What's a drive? It doesn't matter. What's a LUN? It doesn't matter. All that matters is the thing that that system is doing. And all the, as an engineer, I do care about those things. But ultimately, my job as an engineer, if I'm setting up a system for work, is that it does the job. If it doesn't do the job, I don't care how pretty it is. But if it does the job, the easier it is, the more work I get done in a day, and the easier my life is. What do you think about the flash movement? Obviously, the theme here is flash everywhere. Um, that's going to change some of the, your hands-on approach. Obviously, different configurations. Mm -hmm. uh, some on, on an extreme level will say the disruption is massive in the sense that it's a complete re-architecture change. Others are saying something different. Obviously, 
the elephant in the room has a different perspective depending on the view you look at. Right. It. So, so what's your take on that? I mean, it's still pretty specialized. I know that we've been looking at some testing that uh, shows that with I can't really talk about that. It's not. It's not for, we've been doing testing that shows that the new technologies that IBM is coming out with this week, with flash storage, has even better performance than was could possibly be expected. So, it, it's. I mean, we the, hear, we're hearing numbers from SAP when we're at yeah. Sapphire talking, and, and then you know obviously the, the, the suspects are Fusion and Violin. Uh, two players have done, done these tests with mm. SAP. You know, five minute page loads with apps with big data to five seconds. Five minutes to five seconds. Right. I mean, that's massive. I and mean, that's not like a little rounding error. It's like pretty substantial. And it's and that kind of testing is where the real value, I think, is going to come. That you can get ridiculously high uh, IOPS from a database is nice, but it's really in this cloud <coughs> app environment where response time to the application through a relatively slow network. Network, yeah is Big the problem. critical factor. The performance on the back end of the storage starts helping because you, you've you eliminated all the, the more of the bandwidth restraints, performance restraints you remove from the back. People understand that their 3G or 4G network connection is slower. So they, they, they're willing to cope with that a little bit. But still for for a, for a while <laughs> yeah for another year or so uh, do you see any you see any on the technology side obviously what are the top changes you're seeing because obviously in the marketplace there's a lot of huh. obvious advantages the business models are, are somewhat changing you know storage is kind of wrapped in as, a, right. as an element of, of a bigger solution but at the tech level what are the top three well, things you're seeing well first of all because of work, one of the reasons I'm here today this week is talking about RTC real-time compression from IBM which actually works just like they say it does. We've done three or four sets of tests on it so far, and it works like they say it does, and it makes the storage systems you're using more useful. We're talking about that VMware environment where you have to throw all sorts of workloads at a single storage system. Most organizations are not going to have 10 storage systems with different management setups for a VMware environment. They're going to sort of blend it all in together. And we've seen with the V7000 that you can save your capacity, you have, you have huge capacity uh, efficiencies because of the compression with no performance hit. That's a gigantic change and something that people aren't really conscious of because compression on most mid-range storage arrays is not really very useful. I'll be talking about I that right. I think you're absolutely right. I think compression is one of the areas that no one's talking about yet that's right around the corner because even some, in some of our uh, research around the Hadoop community where huge batch is trying to meet more mm. real-time and high availability, they're compressing everything. Facebook was telling me uh, you know, uh, privately that you know, they're running compression on all their batch stuff. It's because of the network. Mm -hmm. uh, the network problems right. are, are focusing a compression mindset because right. of the network level. Because you have to you move less across the wire. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you think about compression versus deduplication? They're good buddies. They do slightly <laughs> different things. Good buddies. And, uh, like brothers, cousins, well, cu cousins. Like buddies. Cu no, they're, they're, they're very related. Uh, the underlying algorithms of compression and deduplication are, are very similar, pretty much the same in certain respects. The math is probably very similar. It's just how they work. Deduplication, you need lots of identical data to see an effect. Compression doesn't care about that. It just compresses. Matter of fact, in the research we've done with V7000, not V7000, RTC and data domain, where you do deduplication of compressed data, you get even greater efficiencies in capacity utilization. That's a tremendous boon on that type of market. So, so do you dedupe and, do de and then you compress, or you de compress and then dedupe? Compress and then de then dedupe. Why? Be mostly because of the architecture. The ar real-time compression appliance, the RTCA, yeah. goes on the network between the servers and the data motion, the storage system. And, and so that's, that's okay. why. And then, then there's the question that uh, a lot of people don't talk about, which is encryption, right? So how do you apply encryption requirements to either deduplicated or compressed data? Can't do it right just, now. You just can't do it. Uh, they, 
let's say in a practical general market it can't be done because the algorithms that do compression and decompression have to be and deduplication have to be able to see into the files and by definition encryption is preventing you from seeing into the files i would think there are certain organizations in the united states and elsewhere for whom building a system that could see inside that encryption might be possible but our hosts here today and all the other folks who might build that will never talk about whether they actually have that so we'll never know if that works okay Barry Cohen, CTO of the Edison Group. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Great work, cutting edge work. I love the angle on compression and uh, the big brother, the, bro the cousins or friends uh, um, <laughs> comment was good. Best Thanks. friends. Thank Best friends, uh, good job. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll be right back with the wrap up here on day two, right after the short break. Great. Thank you.